QuickBooks Online 2024 Navigation Overview. Get ready and some coffee because we're diving into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online. Here we are online in our browser searching for QuickBooks Online Test Drive, the primary resource we will be using for the first part of the course. This time finding that tool in what I think is the easiest and fastest way, just searching for it. We then have the results. We're looking for a result that has Intuit.com, the owner of QuickBooks in the URL, making us feel fairly secure that we have a legitimate resource here. We're going into the test drive QuickBooks Online. We're gonna be using the United States version. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't wanna be seen with us. but. But that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP, you see what we did with like with the letters? And this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either. Anyone can and should have at least one, possibly multiple CPA thinking caps. Why? Because based on our scientific survey of five people, all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps, wearing this CPA thinking cap without a doubt, according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least. Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey is saying. So get one because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. It will then ask us if we're a robot and we're gonna confirm that we are not a robot. And then once we're in here, we're in Craig's design and landscaping. I'm gonna hold down control, scroll up a little bit, and I'm gonna be at the 125, which I think is a fairly good size to be able to see within a screen recording. Now I'm gonna open up some reports, which is something that I wanna get in the habit of doing every time, that being the balance sheet and the income statement. So I'm gonna go up top, I'm gonna to right click on the tab, as we saw in a prior presentation, how to do, duplicate that tab. As that's thinking, I'm gonna right click on the tab again, and duplicate it again. And this is the process I do basically every time I go into QuickBooks, right? I'm gonna go into the middle tab now. I'm gonna go down to the reports on the left-hand side and open up our major two financial statement reports, which will most likely be in the favorites over here. And it'll almost always be in the favorites. If these two reports are not somebody's favorites, they don't know what they're doing or because these are the primary two reports. So then let's go to the, to the right-hand side and then go down to the reports on the left-hand side and then open up the profit and loss, sometimes called the income statement, sometimes called the P&L report. We'll dive into these reports in more detail later, but I just wanna show that process that we're gonna open those up mainly every time because this is the end result. This is what we're trying to create. If you're using QuickBooks for your taxes even, you're gonna need the income statement. That's what you're trying to build so you can use it to, to make your uh, taxes. So that's what the whole process is end resulting towards. And then I'll have the first tab open, which is where the tab that I will typically use for navigation purposes. Okay, let's get into the navigation then. Remember that the navigation components are going to be on the left hand side or up top typically in a web design a web based type of software the middle part is where the display screen is so whatever you select will then display something in this middle area now this middle area when you first go into it will typically be defaulting on the dashboard on the left hand side so now we have in essence the dashboard open at this point in time and this middle part in the dashboard will change depending on what QuickBooks Online is doing. So this is one of the, this is 
it's kind of strange that that's the place you go to first all the time and it's also the page that that will be changing the most often and it's actually the page that you're not going to be using as much usually because once you're into the system you're going to use these drop downs or side drops <laughs> on the left hand side and up top to be navigating uh, where you want to go but when so that's going to be this middle part now the way we navigate then is when we're trying to do our settings when we're trying to do something that's the underlying components uh, of the software such such as our settings sometimes some of our lists like the chart of accounts can be found here for example then we would go up to the cog up top so if we go up to the cog up top we have your company information this is where the account and settings are we'll take a look at more of these in detail in future presentations but manage users who is using the software customized forms chart of accounts you could find the chart of accounts in other locations which would probably be what most people would do but you have it here too as well uh, get the the desktop app additional info and then you have your lists all lists lists being a, a specific term not maybe so much in accounting per se as for quickbooks in general when we learn terminology it's important to note that there's accounting terminology and then there's quickbooks terminology which is grounded in accounting terminology but sometimes it's different so for example lists used to be a drop down that we had in the desktop version and so now a lot of the stuff that was housed in that drop down we often call lists products and services recurring transactions attachments uh, custom fields tags tags are a special feature we might talk about later and then rules tools order checks uh import data import desktop uh, export data reconcile budgeting uh, audit log smart look and then you've got your profile and so on so these are things again that aren't your day-to-day -day types of transactions these are the underlying things that you do to set up the company file uh, uh, or they're basically your your account information for the day-to-day -day types of transactions that's the stuff that's on the left now you could get to those these items usually in multiple different ways you've got all of these windows down below we'll take a look at them shortly but if you're just doing day-to-day -day transactions the place you might go most often is this drop down the new drop down now over time they've moved where this button is they've have they've called it a plus only they've called it new only i think and now they've got it as a plus and a new so this is going to be the drop down you'll typically find all the day-to-day -day types of transactions that you'll normally be putting in place before i get into that in detail let me also just point out that quickbooks for some times the online program had been really testing out i would call it a b testing two pretty different web page styles that being the accounting view and the business view so if i go to this cog drop down up top you could see that you have this switch down here to the business view so if i switch to the business view you can kind of see some change on this left hand panel so if i click on this then you've got some change over here now that change is not anywhere near as extreme as it has been before because i think they were experimenting with using less accounting style language and more kind of uh just uh just casual very casual type of language was the idea and they used more symbol symbols and whatnot but it looks to me like the accountant view is winning on the a b testing because that seems to be the default view and they've kind of removed a lot of the the look that they were doing with the business view which i think is is probably the best way because because you know the, you were using standard accounting terminology more often it looks a little bit more professional and and whatnot but in any case that seems to be what their current decision is and we know that with quickbooks online they're going to change stuff and we just roll with it that's why we update the course uh, often so that we have the latest look and feel on it so you can see what's actually what's what's happening in the current time frame all right so then if i'm doing the day-to-day -day input it's going to be this information now if you have an accounting background you might be used to thinking about everything in terms of journal entries everything's debits and credits to build the financial statements if you don't have have a formal accounting background then you might not see it that way you might just see everything with the data input forms but in either case remember that with quickbooks 
all recurring transactions, those re transactions that happen on a day-to-day -day basis, we want to have a form for typically. The form is the thing that will record the transaction, the journal entry. And that's really important because the forms will do more than just record the journal entry. They'll also make the bookkeeping process, the flow of the forms flow more smoothly uh, in, in the system. So everything that has a normal cycle will have these forms attached to it. And most of them will be in this drop down and they'll be categorized with the customers, which I would call accounts receivable or revenue cycle, vendors, expenses cycle, payable cycles, employees, payroll cycle, and then the other stuff that doesn't fit in a particular type of cycle. We'll get into this in a lot more detail later, but for now, let me just emphasize this point because it's really important to understand the navigation. We can be a little bit overwhelmed with all the different things. This is a flow chart. This is on the desktop version. We're using the online version, but note that the flow of the forms is basically the same for any type of accounting system. And the desktop version has this nice flow chart. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about here. So if we have the, the customer cycle or the sales cycle, uh, when we have a sale, if it was a sale for, and we didn't get paid yet, then we're going to use an invoice, right? That's going to be the form that we will typically put in place to record the journal entry. And then the invoice will be connected to what we call a payment or receive payment type of form when we actually get paid on the invoice, decreasing the accounts uh, receivable and recording the, the cash possibly in, in the checking account or maybe into an undeposited funds account or funds to be deposited. And then we can actually make the deposit. So these, because these are normal transactions, invoices, receive payments, we have a form specifically designed for them and we wanna make sure to use those forms. If we make a sale at a cash register, we have like a sales receipt type of form that is gonna record the receipt of the, of the payment and the revenue at the same point in time. On the vendor side, we have checks that we can enter or expense forms for the QuickBooks Online. When we pay for things, uh, that are going to be normal types of transactions for the cash outflow. And then if we have accrual type of systems, we have bills, which are going to be increasing the accounts payable. The point is that any normal transaction uh, is going to have a bill. Normal meaning it happened, it ha have a bill, it will have a form to it, meaning any transaction that happens quite often will have a form uh, that's going to be connected to it. Some transactions aren't happening all the time, such as the purchase of equipment that we fully finance. For example, we take out a loan to finance a new piece of equipment. That doesn't happen all the time. So we don't have a form that's designated to that particular transaction. So you can see the same categories here. So if I look at here, we have the customers and then we have the forms that are related to the customers, invoices, a receipt payment, estimate, credit memo, sales receipt. We'll talk about each of these forms in more detail later. And then the vendor cycle, you can think about this as ultimately a cash outflow. We're paying for stuff for the business, expense forms, checks forms, bills, pay bills, and so on. Employee cycle, this will be dependent upon whether or not you're doing your payroll or have payroll. If you do have payroll, are you doing it within QuickBooks or do you have a third party provider helping you with it? Employees, single time active, and then other, these are things that don't fit neatly into any of the other cycles, such as deposits, which you would think fits pretty neatly under the revenue cycle or a customer's, but we could have deposits from other things. So they kind of put it over here. Transfers, money transfers from, from accounts, like a checking account to a savings account, journal entry. This is the form that you don't want to use for all of these normal transactions. You want to use the form and then if there is no form to use, such as that purchase of equipment for, uh, for a loan, then maybe you go to the journal entry, but it should be the last, last thing to, to be using in a normal system. And then statements, uh, inventory, quantity, and we'll talk more about the rest of those later. Now the bookmarks up top, this is where you can put some of your saved items. You got your little pencil here. So this is a newer kind of feature and you can select any of the things that you go to often and add them into your bookmarked area. So that could be a great tool. Uh, if, if you wanna get to certain things faster, I'm not gonna use it because I think their layout one is pretty good and two, 
I want to use the universal layout so that people understand where we're going. One of the problems, by the way, of having a really customized layout is that it works great for you, but if you're trying to explain to someone else what you're doing, you, you can't really do it because their layout's gonna look totally different than your layout because you've totally customized uh, your layout. So there's kind of pros and cons to, to getting over the top with these. But if you, use, if you use some things that are a little bit hard to find, I think that could be a really useful tool. You also have the ability to customize the menu here as well. So then on the left-hand side, if you remember with the desktop version, I'll just I'll just remind you if if anybody with the desktop version, we used to have the 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 cycles that would have centers in them. So on the customers, you have the customer center, and then on the vendor, you have the vendor center, and then on the payroll, you had the employees center. So we have similar concepts over here. Uh, so if you try to group that in your mind, you're like, how am I going to figure out all these things on the left hand side? Well, if you think, well, I've got, I could think about it this way by cycle, right? I have the revenue cycle or customer cycle, the vendor cycle, the employees cycle. So those I can think of as centers on the left hand side. So the sales center is kind of like the revenue cycle or customer cycle. So if I go into the sales center, you can see I have the overview and all the stuff in it here, but if I just click on it, then all those options are up top in the tabs. So now you've got the overview, uh, we've got the all sales, these are the transactions that happen for the sales side. We've got invoices, these are the things that we, when we build the client, the major tool that we're going to be using, we can create invoices from here as well as from here. So we can create invoices from multiple places if I'm in the customer center or sales center estimates which are going to be tracking if we have an estimate for a job before we actually invoice the job we have our customers so this is us tracking the people that we do business with that are going to hopefully pay us so of course if we have accounts payable that we're tracking we do the work we send out invoices they haven't paid us yet then this is going to be a very important area so that we can try to track who owes us the money and then we've got the products and services. These are the things that we use to populate the invoices, uh, such as the things we do, the, 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 the things that we sell, goods and services. And then on the expenses side, we have the expenses over here. This is gonna be the expense center. Same thing, if you hit the drop down, this is kind of like where the vendor side of things is. So a lot of these forms could be found also in the expense center. If I look at the expenses tab, this is gonna be the transactions. We can sort the transactions here. We'll get into this later with relation to the expenses or ultimately money going out. Bills represent things that we have entered a bill for but have not yet paid for. The vendors, for our purposes, vendors means people that we are gonna be paying for, right? You might think this, vendors is a confusing term because uh, we might think of ourselves as a vendor because we sell stuff and we are a vendor if we sell stuff. But uh, for QuickBooks, you gotta remember which side of the table you're on. When QuickBooks says customers, we mean our customers, which is for me a little bit easier to click in my mind. When I hear vendor, I kind of like, I'm a vendor. Well, it's like, I'm also a customer because I buy stuff from other people. But when I'm looking at QuickBooks, I gotta, these, these terms could be used in common language on either side of the table. But for QuickBooks, you gotta know which side of the table they're talking about. If you're the vendors are the people that we buy stuff from, money's going out ultimately. And so then we have the people that we're buying stuff from down here of the list and then the contractors and then uh, the mileage, if we're tracking uh, mileage uh, possibly for tax purposes, that's kind of a special area. We might have a little section on that to get in that in more detail if you want to. And then you have the employees. So that cycle is over here in the payroll. So the payroll cycle. So remember that we'll, we'll talk about payroll a little bit more later, but payroll is a special area in and of itself. And you have a primary question being, do you wanna do payroll within QuickBooks or do you wanna do payroll outside of QuickBooks using a third party provider like an ADP or a Paychex? So that's a big question that you wanna make sure you 
think about if you have to deal with payroll because it's it's a pain to change payroll, <laughs> right? You like to get it done the, done correctly the first time if possible. Contractors, you have a question as to whether someone's a contractor or an employee with contractors. We have to deal with getting their information possibly to send out in the United States uh, to send out 1099 forms and then workers comp, again, an issue with which is related to the payroll. So those are the primary centers here. Now, the other big center that you'll be dealing with all the time is going to be the banking information, cash, the cash flowing in and out. So that's going to be in your transactions over here. Note that most people, when you use QuickBooks, you, you might, you're probably going to want to connect to the bank feeds. And we will do that. We'll talk about connecting to the bank feeds. But the first practice problem we work through, we're going to do it without connecting to the bank feeds so that you can see the cycle of the process. Because when you connect to the bank feeds, they it's kind of advertised and people often feel like everything's going to be automated really easily to connect to the bank feeds. And some companies, it is really easy. But other companies, it's not as easy. And once you connect to the bank feed, all of this information is going to pull in here to what I call bank feed limbo. And you're going to have to know what to do to pull it from here into your financial statements. How do you know what to do to pull it from here into the financial statements? You have to understand the normal accounting cycle and how the bank feeds fit in it. So that's why the first part of the course, we're going to just do uh, normal accounting without the bank feed, the whole process. And then we'll think about how the bank feeds can fit in depending on the type of business that we have. But for for many companies, obviously, this would be another another common area that we would be working in a lot of the times. We'd be in the transactions. These are the bank transactions. Here's the different accounts that you could have connected, checking accounts, savings accounts, credit card accounts are the common transactions. We also have app transactions. We might have a special uh, course that looks at or a special part or a special uh, section that looks at this in a little bit more detail. If you use Shopify or eBay or Amazon, then you have some options in terms of how you're going to get the information pulled in from those online resources. And they have these resources uh, here for that, which is nice. And you've got these app transactions, which is a specialized area for those types of things. And then uh, your receipts, you can upload uh, your receipts here and possibly attach receipts, for example, uh, to certain forms, which can help you with your audit trail. And then your reconcile information is here. Bank reconciliations being the primary thing to reconcile. Those are going to be really uh, important. And we do those basically on a monthly, monthly basis. You've got rules. These are rules related to the bank, the bank. So we'll, uh, bank feeds, we'll talk about them later. And then you have your chart of accounts. Note, we saw the chart of accounts up top here in the cog as well. But this is probably where you're going to go more often to find your chart of accounts. Also note that they've moved this chart of accounts around. You can possibly find it in multiple areas and they keep on kind of putting it in different places. So so, uh, you, so once you find it, uh, this, these are the underlying accounts uh, that, will be, that will be set up. We'll talk more about it later. All right, let's just go from top to bottom now. If I go into the dashboard, you got the get things done. So these are the tasks that they put up top. They sometimes put this flow chart in place uh, which is nice, but it's not as static as the flowchart in the desktop version has been over time. Uh, but that can help guide you. You've got the business overview. This gives you uh, some nice quick, a quick look at a few things like the profit loss, the expenses, some nice charts. However, it's probably not your primary place that you're going to go. At least it's not for me because I open the reports uh, to look at most of this stuff in more detail. You've got a planner up top. This is going to help. This could help with cash flow. We might look at this a little bit more. It's an interesting kind of tool that can try to project what your cash flow is going to be out into the future, possibly taking into account the things that QuickBooks knows, such as your banking uh, uh, information when you're connected to the bank feeds and your accounts receivable and your accounts payable, possibly when you're expected to get, you know, get paid on that as well as invoices possibly that maybe you have reoccurring invoices that are going to happen in the future that you expect to be paid on that it might be able to pick up that information and give you a, an automatic kind of cash flow 
and we went to the transactions. We already took a look at the transactions. We already took a look at the sales side. We looked at the expenses side. We've got uh, the the uh, customer leads. Says we can, uh, curious how strong your customer relationships are. Connect your email to get a personal report on the health of your customer relationships with actionable recommendations for improvement. So maybe we'll take a look at this a little bit more in a section. It's got your customers up top, the customers that are also in your sales tab, your customer, and then your marketing, a new way to do research customers. QuickBooks and MailChimp are teaming up. Now MailChimp is, a, is an app that you might be able to connect to QuickBooks possibly here and then and then that's usually helping you to send out your newsletters and, and do your email marketing. So it's less manual work, faster communication, start marketing, no design skills, make conversions uh, relevant. So that's interesting. We might take a look at that more later. You've got your reports. Now we opened up our primary reports from here, balance sheet and the income statement. The reports are another area that people get often very overwhelmed with because there's a whole lot of them. but with the reports, the general idea is that you've got two primary financial statement reports, balance sheet, income statement, or profit and loss. Mainly all other reports are simply giving more detail, expanding upon one or multiple items in the primary financial reports, balance sheet, and the income statement. You've got your custom, well, so we'll talk more about that later. You've got your custom reports, so we can make custom reports and save them here. We'll talk about that later. You've got your management reports. We'll talk more about them later as well. We looked at the payroll. You've got your time information. So you got supercharge your time, get ready to track time, manage products, and so much more with QuickBooks time. So when you when you get into the tracking of the time, there's a couple different reasons you might need to track uh, the time. Obviously, you've got your payroll that you might be dealing with time tracking for. And then you've got, if you're in a job cost type of system and you're trying to bill based on uh, time. So this is a, another tool. We, I think we might have a section on this just to look at it in a little bit more detail where, where it views your team's location, manage time for projects and track time uh, from any device. And then you've got your time entries over here. Over here. And then you've got your budgets. Note that we saw the budgets had a drop down. You could find them up top in the drop down budgeting here. But it says plan better with budgets. Now, budgets aren't really there. The accountant will be involved in budgets, but budgets isn't what you normally think of as the primary first thing that the accountant does because the accountant is doing usually the financial statements creation from past transactions. The reason budgeting is a little bit different is that it does still use the accounting format, but you need more input from the owner of the business, from management, so you can forecast what the budget will be. So the accountant can make budgets based on past information, but to really get a, a budget that's really trying to target something, the accountant needs to be working with management to create a budget. And so, and the, and, and, and the, if we data input that information into QuickBooks, then we can get these nice reports that will then compare the actual information versus budget information as time passes. Taxes has to do with sales tax and 1099. Uh, sales tax is, is gonna be like a usage tax in the United States. And it's, uh, it's QuickBooks has a pretty good system to be able to set it up at this point, which helps you to notify where your location is and what taxes you might be subject to. So that's a great tool. We'll set up the sales tax in future presentations. My accountant, so an accountant team can be your best business partner. So you can invite your accountant. Now, of course, many small bit in many business, small, you know, small businesses, mid-sized business, any business is going to need to deal with their accountant at least for taxes. So you can invite your accountant to get access to your financial statements for easy uh, transfer of data so that they have the financial statements and possibly more to then do what they need to do at the end of the year, possibly taxes, possibly uh, financial reports. Banking, so this is like QuickBooks marketing. Uh, we, we partner with lenders. So if you needed a loan, future funding through uh, QuickBooks Capital, so funding information. Commerce, uh, seamlessly connect your sales channels. 
So again, you might have, if you're in the specialized area of eBay, Amazon, or Shopify, and you sell stuff, inventory on them, then that's a whole kind of separate world of how can I get that information into QuickBooks? How much information should I be pulling into QuickBooks? What should I not be pulling into QuickBooks? We might have a section that will specialize on that in more detail. And then you have your apps uh, down below that if you have any kind of add-on apps, you can uh, search for them in this area. Be careful on the add-on apps. There's a lot of great stuff out there, but you wanna make sure that you're, you're uh, picking what you want. <laughs> And the, and the add-on and the add-on apps so you can search for the apps here and uh, so that's that so that's the general overview we'll dive into more of these in more detail in future presentations